All right, we are on page 600, and this is section 97, factoring special products, okay? Um, in this section, we're going to learn two special situations that have shortcuts to factoring. Now, let's go over a few vocabulary before we get into these shortcuts to factoring. The first word, again, factoring, remember, is basically dividing up or making the expression into a multiplication. You know, here would be, one more time, I've shown this on a previous video, but like if I factor 40, I know 40 is 8 times 5, and I know 8 can be broken into 4 times 2, and 4 can actually be broken into 2 times 2. If I factor 40, I end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. That's 40. I just factored it, okay? Factoring is basically just dividing until we no longer can divide because we have um, no many, pri um, I should, let me say that again, factoring until I have prime, all prime factors, okay? That's what I'm doing here, but I'm doing it with polynomials. The word special uh, in this case is we're going to look at two unique situations today where there are shortcuts to factoring, okay? The first one is called a difference of squares pattern. Now, let's think about this, these words. Difference means a subtraction. Maybe I'll just write that above, a subtraction. And remember, squares, we're not talking about the shape. We're talking about second power. All right, we're not talking about a shape. We're talking about second power, difference of squares. Okay, so here would be an example of difference of squares. And whenever you have a difference of squares, there's a shortcut to this. And the shortcut would be, I'm going to just show you what the answer is going to be. I got to think about this in the following way. I just do a little brain here. And in my brain, I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking, what times itself is 4x squared? Well, it's 2x being squared, right? 2x squared is 4x squared. And then think about 9. 9 is 3 squared. This is a difference of squares pattern. Well, all you have to do when you have a difference of squares is just take 2x minus 3 and then 2x, 2x plus 3. Just write the same binomial twice, except in one of the binomials put a subtraction, one's an addition. If you double distribute, you'll get right back to here. Now, if you're looking at that and you're like, well, you just, Mr. Lomansky, you just confused the heck out of me, all right? You can always get this by doing it in the old method. Let me erase what I have here. I wrote over what I wrote, okay? You notice that there's no X's in this problem. When I say no X's, you might be like, well, sure, there's X's. So there's X's right here. Okay, wait a minute. That's not X's. That's X squareds. Okay, do you notice there's no X terms to the first degree or first power? All right. You could rewrite this problem if you wanted to, I suppose, in the following way. You could put 4x squared plus no x's minus 9 and then, and then solve this normally. We can just factor it normally now. Now remember, we learned that when we have an a, a lead coefficient, not 1, we can do that hokey method where we take a times c, which I'm going to do, a times c, that's negative 36. Now I can factor this normally. Negative 6 times positive 6 is negative 36. Negative 6 and positive 6 add up to 0. But remember, since we multiplied by 4, we got to hokey this up and divide by 4. And we got to reduce it. You know, reduce it. 6 over 4 is 3 halves. And then take that 2 and stuff it in front. And you get 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3. Now, we did all that work. But if you would have noticed the shortcut, remember on my, if you go back in my video, you'll see I already told you the answer would be that without having to even do all that work because I understand the difference of squares pattern. All right. So the difference of squares pattern can eliminate a lot of work if you can see it. Here's another one. Number seven. This is a difference of squares pattern. First of all, when you factor, here's the first thing. You always want to check, do we have a common term that we can undistribute or unfactor or factor out, I guess I should say, is the proper terminology. And you notice how I can divide both of these by negative 3. So if I divide here by negative 3 or I factor out the negative 3, 
I have m squared, and if I factor out negative 3 out of 48, I get negative 16. Now think about this for a minute, just if you're like, well, how did you get there? We practiced this early in the chapter. Remember, if you were to distribute right now, and you took negative 3 times m squared, you'd get right back to here. And if you took negative 3 times negative 16 m squared, you'd get right back to here. Okay, so what I did is perfectly legal. I just factored out a negative 3. Now, do you notice I have a difference of squares here? So in my mind, here's what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking, wait a minute, I got a difference of squares. I have m being squared, and I have 4n being squared. Now think about that. 4n is squared. 4 squared is 16, and n squared is n squared. Whenever you have a difference of squares, all you need to do is take these two terms, m and 4n, and do m minus 4n, m plus 4n, and I'm telling you that's going to be the proper factorization for any difference of squares. It's the same binomial um, in each case, except one's a subtraction, one's an addition. Now, remember, if you can't remember that, you could always think about it in this way. Since we have m times n's in the problem, I have m squared, I have no m n's in the middle, and I have negative 16 n squared. Okay, let me erase my little note up here, so I'm going to have another note that's going to pop up here, and I want you to be able to read it. Okay. So remember, to get m n's in the middle, if I take m times m, I get m squared, m times n, is there's mn's, n times n, there's more mn's, and n times n. So I have no mn's. Well, now I can do what we've been previously taught. What times what's negative 16n squared and yet adds it to nothing? Well, negative 4n and positive 4n would work. And I'm getting to the same thing I just showed you on my video without having to do the work that I had to provide here, just because I noticed it was a difference of squares. Okay. Let's talk about a perfect square trinomial. That's the second special case. Let's think about what this means. Now remember, a perfect square, when we have perfect squares, let's talk about that in a review here real quick. A perfect square would be the following numbers, remember, like um, 1 and 4 and 9, 16. Remember, these were all perfect squares because when we have a perfect square, we're talking about some number times itself produces that number. Or if I take the square root of 4, I get 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. It's a perfect square, all right? Or 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Perfect squares mean if you take, basically if we're taking the square root of that number, it's giving us a whole number, an integer amount, all right? So there's a pattern to perfect squares perfect square trinomials, okay? And here's, here's the pattern, and maybe I'll just write it off to the side, okay? The first thing I notice is this. This is a perfect square trinomial. You might, you might be like, well, how can you tell? Well, here's how I can tell, okay? Here's the pattern. I have x squared. Now, the c term, you notice how it's a perfect square. It's 2 squared. Is it 2 squared 4? And then in the middle, all right, or actually, let me do one thing. It's actually, in this case, it's negative 2 squared to give me 4. Because in the middle, if I take the first term, x, and I take negative 2, and I double it, okay, if I take the negative 2 and the x, and now I go ahead and I double this amount, you see how I get negative 4x, all right? All right. So this is definitely a perfect square trinomial, and so when you have a perfect square trinomial, all you have to do is take the first term and the last term and square it, and I, I'm telling you that's the answer on a perfect square trinomial. Now I guarantee, I, it's hard, sometimes it's a little bit hard to explain. If you look at page 601 and you look in the blue box on page 601, they show you some more examples of that. On a perfect square trinomial, we have our first term, our last term, and the middle term is just doubled. Okay? And you can see that. Maybe I should show that to you like here. This is a perfect square trinomial because I have x being squared. 
I have 9. That's 3 being squared. And you notice if I take in the middle, if I take 3 and x, and then I go ahead and I double it, I get 6x. That's what I was trying to explain here. Now, some of you might be like, Mr. Lemansky, you are confusing the heck out of me. I hope I'm not confusing you, but if I am, I got good news. You can do, you can factor this without the shortcut, all right? But I do want to make one thing clear real quick, all right? While you can factor these using the methods previously taught, which would take you a little bit more time, if you consider yourself to be above average, um, at this material, or actually I should, I should, I should say or, okay, if you consider yourself above average or very good, then I'm hoping that you would see this pattern. Now, above average or very good, if, you're in, if you think of yourself as a BA algebra student, then these are patterns that I think you need to pick up on, again, because these cut time. When you have a test, it's an hour test. I'm going to have some per questions that are perfect square, trinomials or difference of squares that you'd have to factor. For those of you that can see that, it might take you 30 seconds to factor it. For those of you that can't, it might take you a minute or two. All right. Again, the students that are better at the material, I think, would pick up on this pattern. If you're not able to pick up on it, that does, I'm not saying that you're stupid. I'm not saying that that's wrong. It's just that I would consider that much more average. Okay. And if you're, if you're not picking it up right away, um, don't think that that makes you wrong or bad. It's just that if, if you are able to pick this up, those are the people that are, I would consider really excelling at the material and not just meeting the basic bar, all right? So I hope that made sense and didn't disparage anybody. I'm not trying to. It's just the people that are really good at this are going to pick up on this. Um, if you don't pick up on it, it doesn't mean that you're incompetent. It just means it's going to slow you down. And obviously, if it slows you down, you're probably not in a test period. When you have pressure on, it's going to put more time pressure on you, and that's going to force more mistakes most likely. All right? So again, the answer to this, now think about it. If we do it the old way, what times what's 4, but adds up to negative 4? Well, I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking that negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and yet negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4, so I have x minus 2, x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared. There's a perfect square trinomial, all right? Here's another one. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, well, heck, this is a perfect square trinomial. I can see it already, because look at it. I got 7a, let me do it in blue, I got 7a being squared here, and I got 1 being squared here. And if I take 7a times 1 in the middle, and then I go ahead and double it, I get 14a. So I know right now that the answer to this has to be 7a plus 1 times itself, which is 7a plus 1 squared. All right. Now, if you're not picking up on that, you can still solve it with the previous method. Now, remember, the previous method would be we got to take 49 times 1, because remember, the lead coefficient's not 1 right now. 49 times 1 is 49. Now I got to think about what times what's 49 and yet adds up to 14. So unless, if your mental math's not super quick, you might not right away pick up on 7 times 7 is 49 and adds up to 14, but it does, right? 7 times 7. So 7 times 7 is 49. 7 plus 7 is 14. So I got that. So I have x or a plus 7, a plus 7 as my factors, which means I have, oh, I forgot, I got to divide by 49, right? Because since I multiplied by 49 in this whole key method, I got to divide, and I got to reduce the fractions. Well, 7 over 49 reduces to 1 7 stuff the 7 in front, and I'm getting 7a plus 1 times 7a plus 1, which is 7a plus 1 squared. If I would have saw the pattern, I would have eliminated all this work. Okay, so again, not seeing the pattern in no way, shape, or form makes you stupid or anything. It's just slowing the process down. As, and as you know, when you only have an hour to take a test, as the process slows down, you're under more time pressure. And obviously, the people that understand the process are going to get through this more rapidly and fluidly. Those that aren't, it's just slowing it down and making it a little bit more painstaking. 
and that's what I'm trying to say. All right. Um, here, I see a difference of squares pattern right away. Okay, I notice immediately a difference of squares pattern here, but a couple things I wanted to address first. This is technically not written right. We should reverse this, and we don't want a lead coefficient that's negative, so I'll factor out the negative. So actually, before I do that, I can see right now what the answer is by just knowing that this is a difference of squares. So I have a negative, and I have 121p squared minus 49. Okay, this is a difference of squares because this is 11p being squared and 49 is 7 being squared. Here's a difference of squares. So simply the answer must be 11p minus 7, 11p plus 7, and because we factored the negative out right away, we've got to have a negative out front. Okay, so that's simple. I saw a pattern. Okay, now. If you don't see the pattern, that doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means you got more work to do. So we got to factor out the negative, and we had no p's in the problem. And now we got to take 100, since the lead coefficient's not 1, we got to take 121 times negative 49, which is going to get us this huge number. Pain in the rear. Now we got to think about what times itself is, or what number, shouldn't say what times itself, what number. What times what is negative 5,929 and yet adds it to zero? So you can fiddle with your calculator and you'd figure out that 77 and negative 77 multiply out to that. And maybe I should erase this and make it more clear because uh, I did some work there, obviously. And so 77 and negative 77 is what creates this. Okay, but then we can't forget, we can't forget that in the first place, um, we multiplied by 121. So now I've got to fiddle around with this. And now I've got to reduce fractions. Well, I know 11 goes into 77 seven times, and 11 divides into 121 11 times. And now I can take the 11 and stuff it out front, and I'm getting the same answer, but I had to do all that work versus if I would have saw the pattern, I would have been done right away. Okay? So again, if you don't know the pattern or you're not seeing it, that doesn't mean you can't get it done. It's just going to take you more effort, and it's going to give you more chances for more mistakes. Here's another difference of squares. I can see it right away. I'm going to factor out the 4, and now I immediately see a difference of squares. I can see it right now. Okay, I know that if I take C and square it, there's one square, there's my difference of subtraction, and I know 100 is 10 squared. If there's a difference of squares, it's very simple. C and 10. C minus 10, C plus 10. Very simple. Okay, if you don't see that, you can always get it by putting 0C in there, and now you've got to go through what times what's negative 100 and add it to 0. Well, I know negative 10 and 10 are multiply out to negative 100 and yet add up to zero in the middle. Okay, so again, the the two the two um, special products that we're looking to factor today would be a difference of squares pattern, and I'm just going to write those down. Okay, difference of squares. You know, a difference of squares could look something like I'm just going to make one up here. 9x squared minus 4y squared. I can see a difference of squares right there because I have 3x being squared and I got 2y being squared, right? And if that happens, it's very simple. 3x minus 2y, 3x plus 2y. If you can see that and pick up on it, you're going to be a lot better off as far as time and, and being expedient. And then the second pattern is the perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial. Again, just I'll make one up here. Uh, a squared um, minus 18a plus 81. That's I can tell right now it's a perfect square trinomial for the following reason. I have a being squared. I have negative 9 over here being squared. And if I take a and negative 9 and put them in the middle, 
and I double them, I get the middle term. So all I need to do to write the perfect square trinomial is take a minus the 9 and square it. Okay? And I guarantee if you actually work this out using the longer method, you're going to get right to here. Okay? a minus 9 squared. Okay, so I'm going to stop my video there. Those are the two special patterns that we are looking to know in section 9-7.